you'll remember we've recently brought you updates from Sydney businessman James Spensley, who's taken it upon himself to raise money and personally supply ambulances and other medical equipment to the front line of the war in Ukraine. He started off purchasing his first ambulance by himself, cost of $25,000, hoping then to raise enough from the community to supply a second one. Well, due in no short part to the incredible generosity of you, my wonderful viewers here on Credland, James Spensley's GoFundMe page has raised over $200,000, plus an extra $75,000 directly from viewers of this program after he's appeared here on Credland. James is currently on his second trip back to Ukraine. He joins me now from Lviv. How many ambulances have you been able to purchase and deliver in Ukraine? So, well, as you say, no. All thanks to uh, to your viewers and, and to you, Peter. We're uh, we're now up to uh, this is our fourth ambulance. Uh, we've also uh, had one of your viewers donate uh, to buy a minibus so we can get some people evacuated from cities. Uh, and we've got a couple of uh, four by four uh, cars that can get into areas where ambulances can't get into. So we're up to about seven vehicles now, and we we hope with the funds we've raised, maybe we'll get up to about fifteen to to sixteen vehicles. We're watching dignitaries certainly go to Kyiv, not broadly across Ukraine, but they're going to Kyiv, they're meeting with the president and other dignitaries. There's a sense that Kyiv is still operating relatively normally. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, but what about the other places you've visited? Yeah, I think Kyiv is sort of almost coming out of shell shock. You know, they're cleaning up. Uh, there's, there's all the tanks, the destroyed tanks and stuff have been removed from the streets. So there's almost a feeling of, you know, they've got through the other side. Uh, we, when we went further south, uh, places like Odessa, Nikolaev, uh, Zaporozhye, which are all, you know, 50, 100 kilometres from the front lines, uh, it's very, very different. You know, it's a, people are not in the streets. Uh, you hardly see any cars. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really different mood there. Um, people leave the house only for essential reasons. Um, so it's almost like, you know, there's no one on the streets and people have that sense of maybe impending doom that, that, that it could, what they've seen come mm. to Kiev and Melitopol and Mariupol could be coming to them. So, yeah, very different mood in, in the south and that's where, you know, most of the vehicles and the support that we're getting from your viewers is, is going. Right, go back to February when all of this occurred. No one, I think, would have credibly said Ukraine would have held as it has uh, right to where we are now. Is, is the resolve still there with the Ukrainian people? Has it perhaps even strengthened? 100% strengthened. I think, you know, in early February, there was always talks of maybe, you know, maybe doing peace deals. But I think after the atrocities, you know, of Mariupol, Butcher, you know, the way that the Russians have, have treated the people, bombing hospitals, bombing schools, I've been to so many hospitals that are just rubble. I mean, it's it's terrible. So I think, you know, after all of that, the resolve here is is 100%. They will absolutely fight to the bitter end. There's a lot of pressure on uh, the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, when he's overseas in Paris at an upcoming NATO meeting uh, to come to Ukraine. He's certainly been invited there by President Zelensky. We've seen other leaders go there on the ground. Boris Johnson has been there twice. Do you think he should be there in Kiev? I think absolutely. You know, Australia is just such a leading nation in terms of what we do for, you know, humanitarian aid. You know, the fact that I'm here is just brightening so many people's days. They can't believe someone's travelled 15,000 kilometres. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not the Prime Minister, so I think it would do an incredible job here. I'm happy to show him around. If he wants to reach out, we can, uh, we can take him and, and deliver an ambulance together. You know what, I might just connect uh, his office with you, James. I think it'd be great for him to see what an Australian's doing on the ground. And maybe he might hear directly from you and others exactly what else Australia can do, because I know it's not just the military yeah. that's support that's so important, it's the support that hits civilians as well. Yeah, that's the. I think the military support is incredible. You talk to soldiers, they're getting guns, they're getting howitzers, they're getting everything they need, um, but there's just no direct humanitarian aid. You know, one ambulance makes a difference to the mayor of a city of 500,000 people that he, you know, that he comes out and meets me. So, you know, there's very little aid. There's, you know, people are asking for sleeping bags, for food, for medical supplies. There's so much we can do, um, mm. you know, with, with what is comparatively very little money compared to all the weapons that are, that are going in. But the aid's just not hitting the ground here from the big organisations yet. All right, leave that one with me, James. You're doing a brilliant job. Stay safe. I know a lot of people are, are supporting you with uh, prayers and financial support, but uh, it's terrific to speak to you tonight.